G'day guys, Elfie here. Um, I've been meaning to do a tutorial on resource packs for Minecraft Education Edition for a while, and I've finally worked out where I got everything to get myself started. The first place you want to start is, is here, minecraft.net slash add-ons basically. Um, and then if you scroll down a fair bit, you have the ability here to download a resource pack um, to get started with. And once you download that, it actually, if you unzip it, looks like this. Now this is everything, let's make that a bit bigger for you. This is everything in um, within the Minecraft Education Edition textures. So if we go into textures and we go into blocks, right, this is every block that exists, um, including the MCEE custom one. So there's the camera, um, there's the border blocks, there's the build allow and build disallow blocks as well. Uh, so you can modify the textures of any of these items and you are good to go. The other thing you can do is you can mess around with sounds and things like that. So that's what this tutorial is going to show you is how to then modify this to suit your purposes. And I'm going to show you some neat tricks for making blocks invisible, as I have in the animal cell map. Um, and also how to add sounds, hopefully. I haven't done that myself yet. We're going to do that live. Uh, but what you can do is use that as the basis. So I actually don't use that texture pack. I just use that as a basis. So I create, I sort of grab those so let's actually do a new one. So new folder test pack. All right. So what I do is you take those four files there. All right. So blocks, manifest, pack icon, and sounds, and put them in there. Okay. Now you can ignore the ones you're not going to mess around with. Manifest needs to be there, and pack icon needs to be there. Oh, I didn't move. I didn't copy. I mean, I moved. So let's actually copy them so that they're still in my original folder. So blocks is something you need if you want to edit the way blocks work. So if we compare, so let's sort of shift you over here. This is the original, all right, and my blocks.json is here. This is the one I've edited to suit my own nefarious purposes in the animal cell map. And if we go down to planks here, right in this one and here in this one you can see I've added another block shape here to make that invisible so those planks don't even look for a texture it's just invisible so I didn't need to modify the texture I just needed to add that line there so I actually need to do that because I've changed my texture pack since um, and I'm going to find bricks because I'm using bricks for something else okay so I must need to find it up It's not bricks, it's brick. Brick stairs, isn't it? Stone brick, isn't it? Nether brick, isn't it? Brick block. All right, so in there, I want to make that invisible. Okay, and I'll explain why I've done that in a little bit when we turn off the texture pack. All right, so then we're just going to save that exit that. So that's how to make blocks invisible. You just grab that block shape invisible from air and put it elsewhere. In here you can also adjust the sound it makes um, and also other stuff that I haven't messed around with myself. Um, interesting. Anyway, distracted. So that's what blocks.json does, right? Sound gives you all the sounds and what they're all for, okay? And manifest, as I said, manifest is important. Manifest is what gives your texture pack or resource pack the details. So I've renamed mine, so the original looks like that. Example vanilla resource pack, name, description, type, okay? So I've changed that and you'll notice I've also changed these guys here and you need to do that because otherwise you end up with clashes. So to do that you can actually go to 
and just Google UUID generator and you just grab that, all right, copy it. And then in our test pack, I've got test pack back here, don't I? Yep. So in our manifest in here, I'm going to replace that one. And then you go back to the web page, hit refresh and grab another one. So you need two different ones and that goes in here. Okay, so we're going to go test, 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 save that. All right, the next thing you now need to do is have a look at what you want to do. So for my animal cell map, I wanted to do textures, so and I wanted to do particular blocks. So what I've done is I've created those textures in a regular paint program um, or a regular image editor, editor program, saved them as PNGs. Um, what I did initially was probably steal them out of here. So, so I got the sizes right and all that sort of stuff. Um, we'll talk about the, the moving textures a little bit later in this tutorial. But basically you can steal a particular texture. So if we wanted to edit the dispenser. You could steal the dispenser into a image editor, edit it down to look what you want it to look like, and then you bring it in here and name it for the block you want, which is why I like having all the original blocks here. So glass underscore red, uh, glass underscore red will be somewhere there, there. So I've taken that name and put it on top of my texture, right? So what you can do is you only need to edit the blocks that you're changing, if that makes sense. So you only need textures for the ones you're changing. And then you just hit go, basically. This flipbook textures here is where you decide what textures are animated. So if we... Uh, I know where they are, they're all down the bottom, right? So if we come down here to ice, atlas title ice, ticks per frame two, right? So if we go back into here and we find ice, I open with paint.net, it's my personal favorite image editing program. And what that does is basically choose a square section of this texture and change that every two ticks. Okay, so as long as this texture is the right length, okay, so what are we? 16 by 256. So we're 16 across and 256 down. Okay, so as long as that texture is the same or the right length, as in groups of 16, you can add it to this flipbook textures thing. Now, I did have trouble with some of the blocks I was using until I could work out the Atlas title. So the texture that there, textures, blocks, glaze, terracotta, black, just points to this picture here, right? Textures, blocks, glaze, terracotta, black. This Atlas title is what the block is actually called in game, okay? So you initially I was just copying the block, the, the stone brick name down to here kind of thing, and that wasn't working for these guys. Um, so what I had to do was work out what it was actually called in game, and in their infinite wisdom, they had the color in front and you can see that when you're in game. Okay, so that's how to get animated textures. You just grab it and you can say ticks per frame. You can see here they've done it differently here. They've gone frames, so they've said, I wanna do the frames in this order. Um, and then you've got that order there. So there are some that do that. So for example, this prismarine rough does a group of different um, doesn't smoothly run through the prismarine texture and they have a different set of ticks per frame okay so technically speaking in my resource pack for the animal cell I probably don't need any of those other ones because I'm not actually editing any of them so in theory right I could just delete oh, I didn't delete enough delete everything up to the top there, except for the bracket that opens it, right? And in theory, we'll test it. In theory, 
that now means I'm only editing these blocks here and not all the others because those will overwrite the other ones. All right, so now to get that into your Minecraft Education Edition, you want to compress it. Okay, so I'm going to call it Animal Cell. Oh, not call, cell. And then I change it from zip to MC pack. You may or may not need to do that. If I do that, I know it's a, a Minecraft pack. Okay. And then you need to go to your Education Edition folder, which, if you want to know where that is, Windows Users, your username, App Data, Local Packages, Minecraft Education Edition, Local State Games, Com Mojang. There you go. Easy to find, right? And then in resource packs, I've got Animal Cell already in there, so I'm going to delete that and put my new one in. Okay. And then when you load up, let me just get Minecraft Education Edition running on my other screen over here, and I'll bring it across once it's done. Once you've done that, you can actually find and turn on that resource pack within Minecraft Education Edition. Okay, so here we are now in Minecraft Education Edition. If I go into settings, I can actually add that resource pack to every single world if I wanted by doing it in global resources here. Okay, so settings, global resources, I can add that resource pack so it goes into every world. Now that's not suitable for what I'm trying to do here. So if you have a world created, you can actually have particular resource packs in there. All right, resource packs are applied bottom to top. This means any asset that is in two packs will be overridden by the higher pack. These packs in your world apply on top of your global packs, right? What that means is that global resources does everything and then anything you modify is above that, okay? So I can't, I can't move this up or down because I've only got the one resource pack in there, okay? So if we go in there and play, you can see Oh, I deleted the water flow because that used to move. Okay, so I need to go back and edit that. But you can see that this no longer looks like a standard Minecraft world. And my ice texture is actually moving. Um, as are these guys here, which is the glazed terracotta that you saw. Okay, so I need to go back and put in my water movement one. Um, and we're standing on wood planks. So I can place wood planks, but they are just invisible. They don't actually have a texture. Uh, 91949. Okay. I'm currently, you can see the, the command block spam over there. I'm currently standing on brick blocks. Okay. Um, and that was so that we removed world builder ability at the start. So if I go back to settings here, and we just, I can't edit while playing. Okay, so we'll have to save and quit. So you can build without the resource pack. So if I remove that from there and we go back in and play. So what that means is you can now see what this world actually looks like. So you can see that there's glazed terracotta there and that's actually water that I'd been retextured as well. Um, and so on and so forth as we come all the way back into the cell. All right, so if you want invisible textures, then that block invisible in the manifest is what you need to do. If you want see-through textures, you need to use transparent blocks. So for example, ice, red glass, um, and stuff like that is what's transparent, um, and that differs in the way that Minecraft then uses those blocks to, to let light through or not. So you can see that here I've got glass because those particular parts of the textures need to be um, see-through. And I've also made glowstone invisible too, so that glowstone doesn't get in the way of the experience in the map. So that's, I think I'll call this part of the tutorial done. Um, there will be another tutorial later um, showing you how to add sounds to said resource pack and how to get them to play in-world. Um, 
so I need to go back. So let's actually just go back. No, I just want to minimize you for a second. So if we go into mine, I want the water texture back. So I'm going to go back into flipbook textures. Here's water flow here. Okay, so I'm going to grab. Ah, so maybe you do need all of them. There you go. Because none of those other ones were actually doing what they should have been doing. So if we put them back into my one there, we should have our water flowing again. There we go. We tested something and learned from it. So then if we nuke that, compress you again, animal MC pack. It may not let me do this, but let's give it a try. Oh, it is going to let me do it. Good. Okay. Will Minecraft recognize the new one or not is the real next question. So let's get Minecraft back up. I want to add the resource pack back to that and then go in there again and see if the water is now flowing or whether I need to relaunch Minecraft. Nope, water is now flowing again. Okay, so that you can see but I've lost my terracotta animated textures now. What's my ice doing? Ice is frozen as well. Troubleshooting, you know why? Let's go and have a look because I reckon I know. Minimize you. If we go into our flipbook textures, I reckon I copied that close bracket there, which I didn't need, and I need a comma there. So that was just a minor mistake on my part. So let's zip it up again. Delete the old one, put the new one in, go back to Minecraft, go back to the animal cell, and hopefully all of my animated textures are back. Yes. All right, so we've got all of those back now. So that was just a silly mistake on my part when I was copying over those other ones. So the more you know, those flipbook textures get overwritten full stop. So if you want normal animated textures within there as well, then you need to keep that happening. Again, that probably wouldn't have mattered so much for this one. I probably could have left it and just put the water, flowing water texture back in. Um, but so be it. All right. Calling it there. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one when we talk about adding sound to a resource pack.